Hey, my name is so, oh, my name is Norbert Martinez from Spacity Technology. I'm going to give to you an overview of the social network benchmark uh, that we are developing, developing as a task force. And for those who have attended to the previous two meetings, it's going to be almost the same with just an update of the current work in the last six months. I'm sorry, but I need to introduce to the new ones uh, what are we doing and then. Uh, is going to be some uh, repeated slides from the previous one. Okay, uh, I'm not going to enter in real details of how we are developing each uh, module of the benchmark. I'm going to give an overview. And if you want to later, you can uh, ask for more details to the members of the task force who uh, are working on this. Who are the members of the task force? We have three universities, Bua here from, from Amsterdam, UPC from Barcelona, and Tum from Munich. From Munich. And also uh, two uh, industry approaches, one for the RDF Sparkle uh, databases, so it's uh, opening it to also, and two graph database uh, engines, uh, NEO and uh, DEX, formerly DEX. Uh, why we choose social network analysis? Because it was the, probably the most easy uh, way to approach uh, to the community because everyone knows what a social network is. We had clear examples, we had even uh, data to replicate, we had the statistics, we have public, uh, papers published. It, it was very easy to, to work uh, starting with uh, social networks. Also, such a network is a, uh, can be close mapped to a graph or to a RDF uh, representation. Uh, we have nodes for the entities, we have uh, edges for the relationships. We can even uh, build very small social networks for a small communities to very large social networks like uh, Facebook or Twitter activity or uh, LinkedIn at this moment. Uh, we can execute different uh, types of queries, just interactive to know the friends of a person or uh, the last post of a person or even more analytics to know the activity of a group of people during the last three months. Uh, also, you can uh, execute classical graph algorithms such as page rank or bipartite or whatever uh, kind of analysis you want to do over the whole uh, network or over part of the network. And also, I think one important thing is that uh, there are many types of uses from the uh, uh, user point of view for social networks. This means that we can do marketing recommendation, analysis of interactions, fraud detection. Okay. Then this means that probably was the best example to work uh, with as a benchmark for the graph area. Our audience for this benchmark is going to through, through three different uh, uh, audiences. Uh, one for end users, the ones who, who, who work really with uh, graph processing tasks, and they need to, to have a, 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 some scenario where to compare merits of the products and to compare the different technologies. Also, the vendors are interested in, uh, in this because they need to be sure that their technology is competitive with respect to other technologies, even changing the, 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 uh, the programming model or the data, data representation, uh, even relational could compare with uh, Spark, with RDF, or with graph databases, and also for researchers, of course, to uh, be able to make some research, trying to find new uh, areas of interest, such as uh, distributed graph analysis or even query optimization, and that this venture could provide a standard place to start doing some experimentation. Then uh, we started to uh, analyze the different workloads. As I said before, probably there are three clear uh, workloads. One is the interactive, uh, the classical queries in a Facebook uh, in interface, uh, show all photos posted by my friends, the small queries, relatively frequent, a lot of concurrency, the small updates, or, uh, but very frequent also. We have uh, another area, which is business intelligence, more complex uh, structured queries where, where you analyze a, a more larger part of the, uh, of the network and also you are analyzing part of the online behavior. This means that business intelligence queries can be affected also by the updates that the network is receiving. And finally, as I said before, the classical graph analytics with a larger scale inside the graph as, as a single operation. We want to find the complete page rank uh, of, the, of the network. These workloads means different problems to solve, different uh, uh, problems to analyze, and even different, of, different kinds of queries. Also, we wanted to uh, be able to provide the benchmark to different systems. This means that we, we cannot think that only RDF or only graph databases are going to run this benchmark. Uh, we also have, the, as Peter said before, the, graphic, the graph programming frameworks. 
uh, which are uh, not, not usually persistent, but they are very efficient uh, in, in large uh, SMP uh, or even distributed uh, systems. We have the classical relational data systems that also can run uh, some of these uh, benchmarks. And finally, a new uh, group of uh, a new tendency or, or new group of data systems which are uh, called NoSQL that can be from HBase to Mongo or even document databases or, or other map review systems like uh, like PIC. Okay. Then, uh, are all the workloads be supported by any system? No. We don't expect this. We are uh, we think that some of the workloads are more appropriate for from some systems and others uh, not. For example, graph databases maybe will run graph analytics, uh, but of course, graph programming frameworks will run graph analytics because it's their main area of interest. But graph programming frameworks are not prepared to run interactive queries. Uh, we are still uh, building this table and discussing if uh, these maybes are really yes or not, or uh, uh, we are working on this. But the idea is we are proposing three different workloads for different uh, systems, and we uh, are. Uh, we, uh, we will allow to run the workload separately uh, for each one. What's the, what, what's the expected result for this benchmark? Mm -hmm. Basically, uh, this is four, but it's five, I changed the slide before, sorry. Uh, first of all, we will have a data schema, the representation of the social network in the form of a graph. Second, we will have the workloads mm -hmm. that define the set of operations to perform. As I said before, three different <coughs> workloads. Uh, third, we have a test driver which will be the component that will uh, execute the workloads. Uh, sorry, also the data schema uh, involves to have a, a database generator, a synthetic database generator. Uh, we will have also performance metrics. We will uh, provide or we will uh, define a set of uh, measures that uh, will, me will uh, allow us to compare quantitatively the performance of the systems. And finally, we will provide a well-defined set of execution rules uh, to assure that uh, the valid is comparable and uh, is still is valid and comparable. This means that this will say how the, the benchmark should be validated, should be executed, and should be audited. And all the software will be published in GitHub as open source. This means that the generator, query drivers, validation tools, to, uh, and uh, any other stuff that are required to create or to run and execute the, the benchmark. In more detail, not so much, but a little bit more of detail. Uh, the data schema is going to define the structure of the social network in the graph. As I said before, we will have entities as nodes and relationships as edges, and attributes for entities and relationships. Uh, it's important to say that some of the relationships in the graph will represent dimensions. This is necessary for uh, business intelligence analytics. Uh, this is the UML uh, representation of the schema, uh, all the entities and relationships. Uh, we choose uh, UML just for standardization to avoid some specific uh, database representation for one of the database models. Uh, then, uh, in more detail, this is a classical social network that has uh, the main entity, which is the person, that has some uh, attributes. Uh, some are single valued, like the gender or the birthday, uh, or some are multi valued, like the email and the sticks. We are open to any uh, to an implementation to decide how multi values are implemented. Also, person has two main uh, relationships. One of these is knows people who knows another one, and also it's follows, which is a more Twitter-like uh, style uh, relationship. Uh, people also has more information. For example, uh, it's more uh, where people studied, uh, where people is working on cities where the people is related from his studies or is located in. This is a more complex view of the of the of, of the profile of a, this is the profile of a person, a more complete profile of a person. Also, there is the person activity. Uh, if we have uh, one person, uh, we know uh, if she likes a uh, post. The post has posted. Post belongs to forums, which is some kind of groups. People is are member of groups. There are tagging uh, hierarchy of tags, as, uh, tag classes. This is a complex uh, representation of the of, of, of all the activity of a person. And finally, uh, as I said before, at least two of these sets of entities, uh, locations, which are the cities, countries, and, and continents, and tax with tax classes, uh, have some hierarchy to provide uh, these dimensions <coughs> for business intelligence analysis. 
This is not the definitive schema. We are making some changes. For example, last requirements uh, have decided that we need to add, for example, new attributes for the no relationship. We are changing some uh, relationships for ports, ports and stats. This is, uh, we are still uh, finishing uh, the, 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 the schema and uh, we are making some response changes, but not, uh, this is probably this is going to be the final photo <coughs> of our uh, data schema. Then, having this data schema for a, for a graph, uh, we have a database generator uh, that, okay, this uh, generator tries to mimic uh, this with real data. We don't want to put synthetic data that means nothing. This means that we are using real names, real text, the text in the post, real location, real relationships, and even real correlations. This means that we are posting real German names for German people, but with some uh, variants for uh, foreigners, or we are writing posts in English with real text in English. Uh, also, the distribution of uh, people is quantized depending on the continents and then the countries. This means that the social workers tries to mimic as much as possible being synthetic as much as possible a uh, real uh, social network uh, like Facebook. Uh, the graph model is a correlated property directed level of graph. This means that each node and each uh, edge has a label that identifies uniquely it. It's directed because all the edges in the graph are directed. Uh, and also there are a lot of properties for nodes and edges. We started using the SAP S3G2 social graph generator as the base of the development because uh, this generator had uh, most of the properties that we require for the social network generator and basically this generator has several properties some of them are property dictionaries extracted from TVpedia. Uh, there are some ranking and probability density functions that to guarantee that it mimics uh, real, real distributions. In some cases are power laws, in other don't, depending on uh, the scope of the, of the relationship. There are uh, some techniques for subgraph generation in a single pass. This means that we can uh, scale uh, very fast the, the generator to create very large uh, graphs. Uh, and we use MapReduce for scalability. This means that, this means that uh, the generator is uh, MapReduce based. Uh, it's easy to configure the MapReduce because uh, you can execute in a single uh, thread or even in a distributed environment. And we provide all the stuff to, to do it. Uh, for example, in the last six, six months, this is the new slide. In the last six months, we have been working in scheme updates, we have made a lot of analysis on the data, and we have the data that we have to change some updates. For example, we have reduced some of the, some of the, some of the uh, relationships. Uh, we have to work on, uh, to guarantee that the, the generator is deterministic, uh, regardless the platform, regardless the number of uh, um, uh, systems running MapReduce. This is not easy, but uh, we have been working on this. We, need to, we want to ensure that when you provide an scale factor, the database will be always the same. Uh, otherwise, we, we cannot compare results. Uh, we are changing the nose distribution to be more Facebook-like. This means that we uh, needed to add uh, the capability to have more friends than we expected in with different distribution of uh, friends. Uh, we have changed uh, some of the distributions. Uh, in the previous version, we had an, an unbalancing between the size of the graph and the size of post and comments. This means that uh, all the stuff of post and comments was so large, uh, very large, but the queries uh, were not looking at this information. We have reduced the number and size of post and comments, and now it's more important the topology of the, of the graph. Just an example. We have been working on quantization of population. We want to be sure that the distribution of people in the countries and the relationship between them are more uh, appropriate. Or even we are working in uh, more minor details like to compress the output, new serialization enhancements, we can serialize to different RDF uh, formats, different comma separated path formats, and we expect to provide more in the next uh, uh, weeks. The list is much more larger, but uh, more of them are minor fixes, or and also the list of things to do is even larger. Interactive workload. This is the main workload we, where we have been working on. Uh, the first one is the interactive. Remember, interactive means small queries, very frequent, uh, small scope into the graph. Who knows what is he doing, the last post, or this kind of queries. In general, are read only queries uh, at this moment. Is the, uh, we are querying for uh, the status of the database the snapshot in, in some moment. The current set is uh, 12 read only queries. Plus, plus one, uh, we have one proposal for a shortest path query to be more graphic, 
but we are still discussing. I could say, I could say that uh, probably the 12 return liquidities are uh, fixed and the shortest path are still under discussion. And I said that it's return liquidities, uh, but the interactive for is not just return. At the same time that the queries are being executed in return, there will be some updated streams that are going to be updated in the database to uh, replicate or simulate the activity of users into the social network. This means that at the end, these queries are going to be transactional in some way because the social network is changing. For example, uh, we are going to provide the queries in a, in a single, uh, in, in a specific uh, database format. We are going to, uh, to be more generic and for each, because there are different systems that are going to implement the queries and for each query, there is a description in plain English, the parameters, the expected results, the textual functional description, uh, the relevance of the query with respect of the choke points or the, the challenges of the queries that we want to, to, uh, to, to, look, to look at, at during the query. Also, we are going to provide some validation parameters and validation results, and in particular, uh, Sparkle and SQL examples tested over a, a validation uh, data set. This is a, just an example of a query, how it's uh, specified. There is a name, in, it's clearly a graph query, French within two cops being in two countries. There is a description, the description is trying to be uh, unambiguous, it's, it must be very clear. The parameters, the results, and the relevance. About choke points, which is the challenges for the queries, we have tried to be sure, we are trying to be sure that uh, the queries are, are, are uh, mapping the, the most important choke points for graph, and, for graph uh, analytics or for graph queries. And uh, we have classified uh, the choke points based on previous experience on uh, TPCH and uh, other uh, benchmarks. And from this category, we have selected the most important choke points for graphs. And uh, we have mapped APS to the 12 queries. Probably when the query 13 or the query 12 plus 1 uh, appears, uh, we will cover another choke point for RDF and graph specifics, which is uh, shortest path. Uh, improvements in the last six months for interactive workload. As I said before, 12 queries are almost finished. Uh, testing Sparkle and SQL with the validation parameters. We are working, working uh, strongly into the update streams. Uh, first, we started with the analysis and definition of the update events. Now we have a clear idea of we are going to update and how. And now we are working on the uh, on the components that generate the update streams. Uh, we have been working also in substitution parameters for the for the queries for the workload. The test driver needs some substitution parameters to execute against the queries. Then the first step was to mine data extracted from the from the generator, and then we have uh, updated a set of query parameters based on the distribution and the correlations inside the data. Uh, we are working also. We have been working also in the query mixes. Uh, each uh, run of the queries, uh, in which order should come, is not just to execute one, two, three, four. We need to provide different combinations, and also query mixes says the number, the, the percentage of the execution of each query. Some queries are more frequent than others, and we need to be sure that uh, the, the driver is executing uh, this, this proportion of queries. We are working also, we have worked very intensively in the test direct driver, and we have a first document draft of the execution rules, how the uh, benchmark is going to be, should be executed and uh, measured to, to be sure that uh, the, the uh, auditing uh, could be done properly. We have been working also in the scale factors, the, we don't have the final version of the database generator, then it's very difficult to say something final about the scale factors. But at this moment, we, we are sure that uh, there are some parameters of the generator, what we call DBGen, which are, are going to be fixed by default. For example, uh, distributions, quantizations, or even the, the, the activities on, on the number of years of the network is going to be fixed. And probably the only uh, parameter that is going to change is the, uh, the number of users. This means that, for, for example, the scale factor could be uh, 100,000 users, 1 million users, 10 million users, and whatever. Always for three years with the same distributions. Most pro uh, probably the validation scale factor, the, the scale factor used to validate that your implementation is correct using some validation parameters and validation results is going to be close to the 100,000 uh, users. And for example, at this moment, yesterday, the generator generated for uh, this uh, scale factor 53 million nodes, uh, 
284 million edges and more than 384 million attributes. What means uh, more or less, uh, more than 720 million three points in RDF. And in the unrolled data, this is about uh, 12 gigs of uh, text data, regardless if it's N3, Tartel, or uh, Future work, just to finish, um, for the end of April, we expect to have the first release of the interactive world load. This means the database generator uh, finished, this means the test driver finished, this means the workload generator finished for the interactive one. And also, we expect to have uh, the first set of validation parameters and uh, validation results and the validation executing and auditing rules, at, at least the first uh, draft of the, uh, or the prototype of the document. Also, we will have the second draft of the BI queries. We have made a lot of uh, work on this. We had a first proposal uh, three or four months ago with 15 queries, but we have uh, made more advances. We have made some analysis of the data, we have new queries, and also we are making some requirements of changes to the generator to be sure that the queries will be uh, appropriate and that the, the, the scheme and the data will provide uh, enough and, and rich information. And we are, we, we need to start finally to work on a real first draft of the analytical workload. Uh, we have the idea of we want to of what we want to do. We, ex we expect to have some collaboration from people from the graph uh, analytical frameworks to do this. And this is uh, what, we expect, what we expect to do for the next two or three months. As I said before, end of April, uh, the first draft of the interactive, and uh, before the summer, the second draft of BI queries and first draft of analytical. Uh, our, our intention, our, we, we would like to have the final version of the interactive uh, for uh, the next week meeting, which probably is going to be in uh, October or, or November. And I think that, that's all. If you have, I don't know, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> well, at, at least. Okay. <laughs> some of the queries uh, I'm doing currently involve summation and averaging. And aver averaging in the presence of null values, where you have to count as well as sum, yes. is a very interesting test of the system, yeah? I'm wondering if you, I don't know how you would sum things in a social network, but it might be the number of first uh, connections, yeah, that someone has. So what's the average number of people in the social network that have immediate friends, yeah? Mm -hmm. That summation and averaging is quite challenging, yeah? And I'd like to know if you're thinking about that kind of thing. Well, okay, in, in SQL, uh, there's a rule for the semantics uh, for the average aggregate, so the, the nulls don't count. So non-null values are, you know, the sum of them is divided by the count, which is uh, the count of non -nulls. But um, uh, sum is neutral for the null value. Um, so, but uh, as we've been doing all these, um, we have a few outer joins, of course, uh, for example, that do produce now. For example, if maybe that somebody has not posted anything, or that somebody uh, has uh, has no friends, that occurs. Um, there are uh, some existences or semi-joins, anti-joins, having to do with posts that have no tags, or posts that are not liked by anybody, and stuff like that. Uh, so there are, uh, let's say, optional values, and there are values that uh, relationships of cardinality zero potentially. So you can have nulls from there. But we have not found that <coughs> uh, that we hit a lot of nulls. I mean, we, we do have a few outer joints, and we have quite a few existence even not exist conditions. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, lots of counting, and we have lots of um, Calculating diverse scores, for example, a post being uh, two people are related and there's a relationship score quantifying how related they are, which is a composite of whether they know each other, whether they have answered each other's posts, whether they have liked each other's posts, and so forth. Um, so you have quite a quite a a rich um, set of relationships. And you have relationships weights, like I just mentioned, you know, the, the, the like a number that correlates to the intensity of the relationship. 
and you might have a time series of that, so how the intensity of an action develops over time. So, so there's quite a bit. But now, uh, to come back to your question, they're not um, perceived to be a specifically hard thing, but uh, there are some now, there are some optional signals, so it's being covered. Yeah, comprehensive. Yeah. Um, so this is really nice work. Um, I was curious if you also look at uh, unstructured or semi-structured data as well in these networks, or everything's fully structured, fully expressed. Well, the text of the posts is text. <coughs> yeah, but you don't query it in some way to extract um, some. Yes, yeah, so I saw some the queries that uh, that started that actually. What do you mean to that? There, there are some, let's say, let's, 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 let's be a little bee query that, uh, that's about posting behavior. Mm -hmm. So somebody who's uh, flaming other people. So you have a bag of words that you associate with flaming, right. and then choice posts and mostly replies and never initiating a thread. So that's the definition of flamer. So there's a bee query to spot that. Mm -hmm. Something like sentiment analysis or propagation um, of information? Um, the things that you would do normally with uh, Named entity extraction are covered by the idea of tag. Mm -hmm. So, so where in reality you would have named entity extraction, here we generate a tag that corresponds then to a named entity, and we extract them from DBpedia. So they are real world named entities, mm -hmm. and there is they have some uh, frequency distribution of the co-occurrence. So, um, if you if you're talking about Napoleon, you might also be talking about. Uh, but, um, uh, who was the, I, I don't recall, the, the Russian general who fought against in Berlin. Yeah. Um, so, so there are correlations like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, well, I think, I think it's a good guess question. I, so it's <laughs> good to remember that there are three workloads conditions, and we have worked on actually two of them, mostly on the interactive one. And there is, there is no time for that, really. I mean, these are shorter. Then there is the BI workload, so there is an initial cut of the workload for that. Not finished, I would say. Um, and then there is this graph analytics ID, uh, where you would really do things that you would not express as a query, but as an algorithm. So when you say, I mean, you want to do sentiment analysis, sentiment analysis on the text in the graph, taking into account the shape of the graph, could be, could be uh, an ingredient in the uh, Graph analytics workout. But that workout is the least developed, so we are very interested in your input. So, what's your name again? Alex Yasuk Oh, of course, you're the next speaker. Very good. So, um, uh, yeah, so we are very interested in your input for that. For that workout. Yeah. So, you guys chose Sparkle and SQL as the expression language for the queries. Do you think that affects the Complexity of the queries. Uh, I mean, part of this work is strictly speaking, we do not choose it. Uh, you can just as well say that we also chose Cypher because we have made a serious attempts to also translate it into Cypher. Okay. Uh, but the official line here is that we express queries in text. Okay. And, and, and there is a freedom. Sense. There is a freedom, and well, there is a freedom to implement them in the system. Although there are rules. But you didn't, you didn't revisit the text once you tried to implement in Sparkle and found like, oh, is it too complex to express in Sparkle? Um, have you ever done? Have you ever done? Yeah, yeah, there are some limitations. There are no. some, uh, we, we, these part of the declarative query languages are um, done in the virtual dialect of SQL and Sparkle. And the DC has a transitivity thing where you can have conditions on the edge, for example, which is not part of uh, Sparkle. Um, it may be expressed in SQL 99. <coughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Point one: the bridges does have path expressions, but the paths cannot be qualified, so you cannot test predicates on the path. It's also not trivial to express a shortest path query where you would compute weights along the path on the path. So some Spark engines provide extensions like, I mean, virtual storage system 
has certain extensions that could be used for for those requirements. Top rate can have a function in the predicate position, so you can do all kinds of stuff. It makes it into a higher order logic. Yeah, yeah it's kind of. Uh, <laughs> in <laughs> here we, yeah. in this particular workflow does not have a lot of functions in the predicate position. Yes, yeah. so, yeah. but. Uh, it's not uh, another question. Magic problem. Do we do it? Do we do it? I mean, it's important.